let's talk about work tracking in an office environment. There are definite benefits to having a good idea of how many hours are spent working on what and by whom in any context, especially in a wage environment, a service job or a production line. It's probably critical to ensure that everything is done by the book, that people come on and off shifts appropriately, that no worker gets shorted either intentionally or unintentionally by an imperfect booking or payment system. In fact, I think the EU recently passed legislature to this effect. But it's also common for office jobs to track time. And that may still be beneficial. In the case of contracting, it's still critical. You're tracking the amount of time spent doing something. You're tracking the amount of hours of work effectively purchased by an organization, depending on the style of contract. In general, this can increase both accountability on the part of the employed and awareness of the actual daily needs and effort put in in the eyes of the employer, that they can see what actually occurs. But this is all dependent on having a system that can track the more fragmented work of an office environment effectively. Uh, it's also dependent on the workers themselves to report it accurately and on the employer to use this information as a source of knowledge rather than as a way to extract more efficiency from the employee. It requires something of a positive culture and a mature relationship between the employer and the employees and a system, a software system that supports all of this as well as a logistical system that supports all of it. Some workers may feel more comfortable knowing that they can record the breakdown of their time each day and leave no doubt as to what they have done. Perhaps this reflects their usefulness to the organization or what they've accomplished or that there's no doubt that they have earned their pay. And this can be additionally wielded as information as a defense against after hours work or unreasonable workloads, depending on how the project structure is set up. Others may find it constricting um, in that it forces them to define work into particular buckets where the nature of the work is often difficult to categorize. It limits the structure of their workday to the categorization preferred by management, even if it's neither preferable to the employee nor most efficient in terms of outcome. For example, getting all menial tasks done early in the morning, taking a long lunch break and then working late, etc. These kind of things don't necessarily get tracked by the sort of system that may typically be put in use. And it should go without saying that any system that tracks time in detail should maintain a sense of flexibility to handle the dynamic nature of the real world that can be so difficult to pin down without hurting those encumbered by it. Used well, all parties can gain a cognizance of how the time is spent, and they can work to help regain or establish a work-life balance and reduce wasted time and so forth. But used improperly, it can make workers miserable. It can pit worker and management against each other as each strives to outwit the system and to force each other into the fold of how they think it should work. As long as the dictum is bottom up and not top down, the danger is minimal, though still not perfect, but how often does a system realistically flow bottom up when the bosses control the system? And even if it does flow bottom up, how do you establish a proper representation of the needs of the business when those on the bottom don't necessarily understand the broader picture, and yet those at the top may not understand the reality of the day-to-day -day operation. Note that when I use the terms top and bottom, I am naturally referring to a more hierarchical form of organization, but this same setting still applies to a flatter organization or one divided primarily by role, for there's still usually a certain level of siloing. And when those who are in charge of managing resources for the organization or operating the organization's budget, there's usually a very minimal amount of coordination with those who perform the output of the organization. And that is generally a positive, and it's for good reason, because you don't want those who are tasked 
with producing the end item or service of the organization to be distracted by the needs of maintaining the organization, but at the same time there needs to be a communication back and forth or you lose a critical piece of information regarding the realistic operation. In my own life, and I know this is the experience of many people who work in an office environment, there are a variety of time recording systems in use. Some of them are minimally invasive, just serving to note what tasks were worked on. Maybe they're used to understand on a month by month or year by year basis how much time had been spent on particular items uh, and where their employees' time was allotted in a broad view. The worst systems were outright lies on paper, effectively justifications of time spent that corresponded not even a little to the actual use of time. So is time tracking a bad idea or a good one? It all depends on how you use it. It's just yet another tool where the outcome depends most critically on company culture and the awareness and the consciousness of those who implement it. This is one of those critical areas where the logistics the software, the culture, the employer, and the employees all have to be in a relatively ideal state for the process to work effectively. And step one to that, as it is with so many other things, is good communication back and forth between all concerned parties and a certain level of trust between all members of the organization. That nobody is trying to fool anyone else into doing more work or taking advantage of the system, and of course that's reliant coming back around in a circle on a positive culture. But if there's one key takeaway here, it's that it will almost be impossible to establish a positive time tracking system if you don't have the proper culture in place. A culture in and of itself is not sufficient to guarantee good time tracking, but the cornerstone of all of that is a positive culture.